I am Andrew Latibache with Reliance Partners. I'm the CEO and one of the co-founders. Um, today, I'm fortunate to be joined by Brenda Weiser, who is our Chief Marketing Officer at Reliance Partners. A uh, little bit behind Reliance Partners, we are a retail insurance broker that specializes in transportation and logistics. Uh, we have eight offices all across the country, and 100% uh, of our revenue it revolves around the logistics industry. Uh, today, we will be discussing the current environment uh, around transportation and logistics insurance. Obviously, that's been a hot topic for a number of companies. Everyone's discussing the nuclear verdicts, some of the increasing costs around premiums, and Brenda is as good as anyone uh, to give you an update on what she's seeing. Uh, Brenda, do you mind telling the audience a little bit about yourself? Yeah, thank you, Andrew. Again, I'm Brenda Weiser. I am the Chief Marketing Officer at Reliance Partners. I joined uh, this dynamic team in January, and uh, I've worked with truckers of all shapes and sizes for 30 years now. And one of the things I love about being at Reliance Partners is that we leave no trucker behind. So we uh, have a little something for everyone, and we try to help everyone that becomes our customer. Uh, unfortunately, we're in a tough environment right now, as, as Andrew alluded to, and I don't think it's a surprise to any trucker out there. So hopefully we can add some insight to what's happening in your world. Brenda, thank you for that. And so probably to start off, I think uh, the number one topic has been the nuclear verdicts that are out there and kind of the results that it's having on uh, everyone's renewals, and it's affecting companies, regardless of whether they're one truck to a thousand plus trucks. Um, and it's, you know, really uh, hurting some of the, the excess and umbrella markets and the limits that can be provided. But just for a general overview and kind of the, you know, the standard $1 million auto liability policy, can you kind of give us an update on where the current market is in 2020 versus 2019? Absolutely. So, you know, right now, I think um, nuclear verdict has become kind of a, you know, a popular term to use. Uh, really, the way nuclear verdict gets defined is, you know, it's a verdict that's generally over $10 million. So, you know, as a trucker who might be listening to this, you know, they're saying, look, I, I've never had a verdict close to $10 million. You know, why are my rates going up? Well, unfortunately, behind every insurance company, you also have reinsurance companies. And those are people that insure the insurance companies. And, you know, unfortunately, there's a lot less of them than there are of the actual insurance companies out there writing the insurance coverage. And so when things like nuclear verdicts take off, it really rocks that industry. And obviously what happens is those costs get passed down to the insurance companies who then pass those costs down to the customers. Now, another area when, you know, when I hear the word nuclear verdict, I really like to, to change that and kind of define it differently. Um, I like to use the word unpredictable verdicts. Those are the ones that I think are really affecting your smaller trucking companies. Um, they're not necessarily seeing a 10, 15, 20 million dollar verdict, but if they have a claim that does end up at trial, you know, there's no predictability as to what's going to happen. And that is where we're seeing a lot of heartache on the insurance company side, um, just not knowing what's going to happen. So you're seeing claim verdicts rise and rise, and with that, you know, insurance premiums are going up. Definitely. And I love that you said no trucker left behind. That's something we really uh, tell everyone every single day within our, our company is it's uh, because we have folks that even just single unit owner operators we insure and, and, you know, and they're all facing cost and margins are very thin already. Uh, now, with some of the technology that's available out there, have you seen that? be, you know, the inboard cameras, um, you know, some of the, you know, the anti-collision systems that are in the, in the tractors. Have you seen that have a positive result as far as the claims? Because, like, I agree with you. I think what we're seeing is um, potential verdicts. So, I mean, I have multiple lawsuits, unfortunately, that whether we're at fault or not at fault, 
and regardless of the data we have available, um, people are still asking for astronomical amounts uh, at the very beginning when they bring suit. Exactly. You are exactly right. You know, they start high and then somewhere we meet in the middle. Um, you know, uh, it, it's a really good question you posed because I think a lot of trucking companies out there um, think that, hey, if I just get this one more thing, the insurance company is going to like me and they're going to give me a reduced rate. If I just get telematics, if I just get some collision avoidance, if I just install a camera system, um, I'm going to get some kind of discount for that. I think what we're seeing right now in today's environment is that those items are really expected by your underwriters. You know, five, six, ten years ago, if if I had a customer that had telematics, my underwriter was given credit for that. That account was going to the top of the stack. They were so, they were just so excited to have that. But nowadays, like I said, it's really expected. And what underwriters really want to know is with all this technology, what are you doing with it? So it's just not enough anymore to have a telematic system or to have collision avoidance or to have cameras. What are you doing with the data that you receive? Are you retraining your drivers? Um, you know, are you upgrading your fleet so that you can use some of these technologies? Um, they really want to know what it is uh, that you consider helpful from the data that you're receiving and what you're doing to move forward and take action on that data. And that's where I think um, the industry is really going, uh, both on the insurance side and the trucking side, but together they're going there, uh, which is really, you know, about what can we do, you know, to, at the end of the day, prevent accidents. So, you know, just like anything, you really have to look backward to go forward. So if you have a telematic system, if you have a camera system, you know, one of the things that a trucking company really needs to be doing is examining what information they're getting off of that and what do they need to change in their procedures, you know, so that going forward, they may be able to prevent some accidents. You know, um, Unfortunately, with all of these technologies also comes cost. So not only may you, you may or may not be getting a benefit from your insurance company uh, as far as a uh, premium discount for having some of these technologies, but you may get more insurance companies available to you because you have these technologies. So in a sense, it's a win for you to have those, but we also recognize that all these technologies come with a cost as well. Yeah, that's one thing I get asked all the time is, oh, if I put cameras in 100% of my trucks or um, have the new equipment with all the anti-collision systems, do I get a premium discount? And unfortunately, that answer is is no. <laughs> you know, and I think they hear different things, but you know, it's. Um, I, I do think there's some things on the horizon and some uh, new insurance companies that are trying to change that or build it into the premium. But, um, you know, I think you'll see that come along more and more uh, into the future, potentially. Don't you think we are seeing that a lot, Andrew, where we've got a lot of insurance companies now that are saying, hey, you know, we really do want to plug in and partner with you on your telematics system. And if we can, you know, determine and examine how your drivers are driving, then it may allow us to give you a discount on insurance. And, you know, I definitely see that coming, you know, fast and furious down the down the pike here. <laughs> How about you? I mean, are you seeing that? Yet? Yeah, I think we'll see it in the next, you know, uh, 12 to 18 months for sure. More and more companies. I think it's one thing that, you know, unfortunately our world is uh, split, right? So I think one of the things is, you know, they talk about the $2 million limit that's trying to be passed is large fleets. Typically they're taking on what I think sometimes small carriers don't see is they're taking on a lot of risk in house. So some of them are on the hook for, well over a million dollars per accident or per occurrence. So they do have a team behind the scenes. So I think when you look at where a lot of, you know, majority for hire carriers are in that kind of 25 trucks and under space, um, I, I do see the insurance companies starting to say, well, let us plug into your telematic system. Uh, let us subsidize the cost of cameras 
and let us, you know, kind of be more of a partner with you. Um, and there's a little more premium to pay with there because typically, you know, the smaller fleets are buying guaranteed cost premium options, uh, which is kind of a good leeway, you know, because I don't think this is ever discussed much. So if you could put yourself uh, kind of into an ex executive role or an owner of a 10 unit trucking operation, let's just say you had a insurance renewal that just took place May 1st and you experienced, you know, not only 2019 with the uh, large increases, but then in 2020, you had a great year in 2019, you come to 2020 and you just got another 15% premium increase. What are some things that, and, and let's say you have one or two alerts with your CSA scores. What are one or two things you would try to work on to minimize the potential increase in 2021? Because uh, as a rule, the insurance companies are continuing to, to have to get more rate. Um, but is there any steps if you are in that alert status or there are some bad drivers maybe in, in your company, or maybe let's just say there's not bad drivers, but let's say there's drivers with some, um, some tickets or things of that nature and how they can impact the premium, what would you do moving forward? Well, I, you know, it's really a, a relevant topic that you bring up because, you know, pretty much nowadays when an underwriter sees uh, a, an insurance submission that comes in from an agent, you know, that underwriter isn't looking at anything on that account until they check their CSA scores. And they can do that through a variety of systems that they have available to them. But unfortunately, a lot of decisions are being made on CSA scores. And I'm not sure that the general trucking public, I know they've heard it, but I don't know if they really realize that in a matter of seconds, an underwriter could be declining their account over alerts. And, you know, while we all do understand that it can take time to get those alerts down, if there is anything that a trucking company could do to present themselves in the best fashion to an underwriter, it would always be to clean the slate on the alerts. You know, we, the underwriters just do not want to see them. They don't want to see an elevated ISS score. And again, I realize this is a perfect world scenario I'm putting out there. Uh, it's not always possible that we're not going to have alerts. But the, if you do have alerts, it's important to have a plan. You know, what am I going to do to move forward? How do I clean up these scores? You know, is clean, does cleaning up scores always mean I have to let drivers go? No. You know, what we really need to do is you need to work with your safety professionals, your insurance professionals, and look at what kind of programs can be put in place so that we can optimize driver performance. And those are the types of things that can really help you with an underwriter. And it's something that we really focus on with our customers as well. The other thing is don't be, you know, tardy in your data cues. If something doesn't need to be on your record, get it off. You know, I, I recognize it's not always the easiest process to get that done, but anything that can be data cued um, needs to be done. It's one of the best things that can help you and quickly help your scores. How about you, Andrew? What are you seeing with some of your, you know, customers out there? Uh, I agree. Um, I think the one thing too is like, you know, you hit it on the head with kind of coming up with a plan. I think if, if I was to advise anyone out there, I think it's to be with someone that specializes in transportation. The market's getting more and more difficult. Um, Reliance Partners, that's what we do, but there's plenty of other good agencies out there that, that do a fantastic job <clears throat> of helping trucking companies um, with their insurance and risk management program. So, but we see a lot out there who, um, unfortunately, they may be with an agency that has one or two markets. And if those markets decline your risk just based on uh, CSA scores or MVRs or things of that nature, you're going to continue to experience significant increases at renewal. So I think that's one thing we like to walk through with our insurers. We like to educate them um, on where their CSA scores are, what can be done to reduce them. 
um, and just really provide an overview and whether that means if, let's say, small fleet program is going to be more guaranteed cost, so educate them on what's going on or maybe new entries into their market space or where they're domiciled. Uh, the middle fleet markets, some are looking at taking on small deductibles, um, which means they're taking on a small part of the risk uh, to reduce the insurance premiums, and, and we've seen that be successful in decreasing the, the increases. And even on the large fleets, the retentions or captives are um, a big topic and continue to be pitched and gain steam, um, reduce some of those programs as well. And, you know, I think that's really a, a big key is honestly sometimes we, we're fortunate to write business and be successful, but sometimes it's that uh, they've never been with a broker as multiple markets. So I would think that's, that's key. And um, like I said, there's, there's plenty out there. Uh, that do a very good job, but I think that's something you may want to look at because, you know, as they say, capacity in trucking or capacity in insurance is getting tighter and tighter. So it, you need to make sure that you explore all options and, and you're getting quotes from as many companies as you can. Well, you know, you brought up earlier uh, about the, you know, potential to go to the required $2 million limit. And uh, it kind of made me shiver a little bit in that, you know, I think of the excess market right now and some of the difficulties that we're having there. Uh, and it doesn't matter what size account you are. It doesn't mean you can't get a quote, but it just may not be a price that you want. Um, talk about what you're seeing on the excess side of things. I know, you know, just from my vantage point, it's, it, you know, limits are being reduced. Uh, rates are definitely going up. Attachment points um, are, are getting higher and higher. And, you know, if you can maybe talk about that a little bit with regard to the potential for just requiring a $2 million limit for truckers out there. You know, it is tough because the million dollars has been in place for so long. And, you know, I think there's a lot of arguments whether the $2 million will just increase the amount uh, that, that uh, not only are the transportation companies liable for, but also the, the amount that the plaintiffs will ask for. So I think it's, it's something that's a, a hot topic and needs to be discussed. And, you know, granted, over time with inflation and everything else, you know, is a million dollars enough? I don't know. I mean, when I first got in the industry 17 years ago in the in the insurance side of things, a uh, million dollars seemed like enough. Um, in today's world, to be honest, uh, you know, I've had a lot of claims go over the million dollars. And it's something that I could say the first few years of my career, I didn't have any. You know, they all settled a million. So, you know, I think the the one concern is, like we discussed earlier, you know, people don't understand that 90 plus percent of four hire trucking companies are under 20 units. Most of these companies buy a million dollars. Many of those are under 10. So, you know, the ability and the capacity to buy an additional one million in coverage will be difficult. Um, it, one, we don't know how to price it. So a lot of these carriers that do buy the larger limits and excess um, umbrella or larger fleets, well, the carriers can, you know, if, whether they're riding 5X of one, which means they're putting 5 million over the, the 1 million primary, or even a 1X of one, an, an additional million, they're getting enough premium because of the, because of the amount of vehicles. So if you have a single unit, owner, operator, entrepreneur that does all the right things. Uh, they're one of the best of the best, really, that you could ever have haul your freight. What is going to be the cost for he or she to purchase an additional million dollars and to still be able to operate? And, you know, if two million was to pass, you know, I'm, I'm hoping insurance companies find a way to, to be able to do it without just saying it's double. Right. I think that's everyone's fear. If we're paying ten, fifteen thousand dollars a truck for one million, there's no way I can pay thirty. Um, and I think that's something that's going to have to be really looked at um, and understand the consequences and, and the effects that it could have on our industry. Uh, absolutely, I couldn't agree more with that. So, and you know, again, too, when you start talking about raising limits, uh, obviously, like you said, it raises costs. And guess where that gets pushed to? You know, not only does it get pushed to the trucker, it get it gets pushed to the consumer. So when you think about going to pick up your eggs at the Piggly Wiggly, you know this this is what's happening. This is why the cost of eggs might be going up. Right. 
Yep, the the end use, end consumer and shipper. I mean, that's who's going to incur these additional costs. So, well, Brenda, um, it looks like our time's up, and this has been a wonderful call. Thank you for for answering all the questions in such great detail. And if anyone has further questions, um, Freight Ways can help you get in touch with us. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.